A balanced life of projecting light and compassion to everyone and everything that comes within the orbit of you. Now sit with a nice straight spine. Let the energy flow freely. Feel yourself solid and complete. Part of the matrix of all existence. Here you are. Sovereign within your own magnetic field, within your own God-given psyche to experience joy and happiness. And as we chant the Adi Mantra, vibrate to that infinite from beginning to end sound, the sound of infinity in its totality, Om. And humble yourself with Namo. And then Guru Dev, Guru, that unseen teacher that dwells within my cells, within my bones, within my heart, and within my mind. I bow to you, Guru Dev Namo. Just the simple recitation of this Adi Mantra will connect us all together as one beating heart with the lineage of Kundalini Yoga and all of the masters that we can join together to relieve ourselves from the blocks that strip away our success and happiness. Now inhale deep, exhale deep, deep, pull the navel back, push it all the way out, all of the air out. Now force the belly forward and inhale deep. Lift the chest deep, deep, deep. Now hold this breath. Exhale. Pull the belly back purposefully, intentionally. Inhale deep. And suspend. Just suspend the breath. Hold it. Let it be in the body, but don't choke it off. Elevate your chest. Lift your spine. Feel it filling you. This is Guru Dev, Pavan Guru. And exhale. Let the breath be loose and natural for a moment. Feel the frequency that's created by connecting with the breath of life. And inhale to begin the Adi Mantra. Om. Sadam. What we're going to focus on here this morning, it's not a long class, you know, not a big deal. Um, we're going to focus on the one impediment 
that comes up over and over and over to strip away our success in business, to strip away our success in relationships. And this is called anger. Not just any anger. It's hidden anger. What does it mean to be hidden? Oh, 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 oh. what? Unseen. Unseen. Uh, Okay, what else? Unaware. Unaware. Okay. So So my keys, which are unseen and unaware in my pocket, are hidden. Hidden from you. What does it mean in a little bit deeper? Go more into the word hidden. What what is it hidden? What is it? Hidden hidden is like, you know, coming from... If you're being stalked, right? You're walking through the seedy part of town. And there they are. A bunch of pre-teen gangsters. You know? But there's 50 of them. And they're after you. And you want to get away. What do you do? If you're going to hide, what do you have to draw in to hide? What does it mean to be hidden? Out of sight. You are absolutely out of sight and undetectable. Hidden isn't just unseen. It's undetectable. Because if you're, if you're, oh, hide and seek, here I am, you know. No, 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 no. Hidden is hidden. And when it's hidden anger, it's, ha- it's anger that you and I cannot find. In fact, Yogiji said, it's not even your damn anger. It's not even your anger. Some of it. I mean, well, okay, you're sitting with some friends and you look at the situation of the world. The politics, the economics, the environment, the consciousness, it's all going to the shitter, isn't it? I mean, it really is. It's going to the toilet. It's just, excuse my French, but or it's not really French. It's American. Excuse my American. Um, you know, it's just going in the toilet. Children's vocabularies are reducing. When I was a child of 11 years old, I had like, you know, my vocabulary was whatever it was, like 380 words or something, you know, sophisticated words. Today, it's less than half, half of that. Stuff is funky. You're sitting around with your friends. You're going, God, this sucks. I mean, are we in consensus that things need some change? Yes or no? Yeah, things need some change, right? Well, do you know what that does to us when we're sitting and, and we see that, we need, that it needs change? We get pissed off. There's hidden anger behind the realization that things have to change. We're we're upset. And so that hidden anger gets inside of us. And that hidden anger has the capacity to take and, and steal our success away. I mean, you're not really angry with your friends or your business partners. I mean, maybe they did something stupid, it pissed you off, blah, 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 blah. But they don't have anything to do with the world at large necessarily that makes you angry or, or what's happening, you know, geopolitically and what's happening environmentally. And these things that bug us, they produce in us hidden anger. You know why? Why? Think about what Guru Singh was saying yesterday. Why? Because they become part of our story. That's part of our story, is what's, what's out there, right? We're, re, we're reacting to what we see reflected. And when we see things that don't sit well with us, that's not really us, right? So we're reflecting back something that's not truly us, and that gets under your skin. That, that, that gets you. And then there's the, the conscious anger, the stuff that we're, we're pissed about, right? Dad wasn't nice to you, right? He was being an A, an A, A-H. Yeah, a, there, there, he said it, he mouthed it. Yeah, and aho. Okay, right? You have the right to be upset. You, get, you have the right to be angry. What we don't have, those are all healthy things. We've got to own those things. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're provoking our life because we're not really owning it. And here's this, this thing out here. If we own it, we process it, we accept it, and then we get over it. 
what's the natural outcome of someone who betrays you? What's the natural outcome? Somebody betrays you, what happens? What's the first thing that happens? You get angry. And what's the second thing that should happen? Disappointment. Disappointment. Yeah, you're very disappointed. And then what happens? Something runs away from you in that relation. What is it? Trust. trust. What a guru saying, what was he talking about? You were talking all day yesterday. You've got to trust. You've got to trust that what you see as your destination is going to be real, that it's there. That you're part of the whole river. And this aberration, this, this little thing that happens, isn't really part of it. And so you have to, even though you've been betrayed, what do you have to trust in that person? You know what? You get, you, you literally, literally, you get nine chances, you know? How many lives does a cat have? What? Cat has nine lives. That's, the, that's what they say. A cat has nine lives. You know why? Because the first time somebody does something, you just let it go because you know them and they're cool. You know, they're human. And then it happens again. And it's like, you know, that really wasn't very, that wasn't very good. And then it happens a third time. And then you start to notice. And you go, but you question yourself. It's like, well, did, they, did that really happen, you know? And then it happens a fourth time. And then it confirms to you inside of yourself that, yes, this person did this. But, you know, you're going to let it go, you know, because, you know, maybe, you know, you're not really sure. And then it happens again. That sixth time that it happens, you go to somebody else and you go, hey, you know, uh, so-and-so, sing, man, person, woman, did you notice, have you seen this? And you get confirmation that, yeah, this person has done this. And then it happens again. And you go to them, you say, hey, look, this isn't cool. You know, you, you keep doing this. This just this, this isn't right. If that guy does it again, again, the ninth time, you will say, once more and you're out. And if it happens once more, even if you're still in association, you will never trust that person again. It's a cosmic law. Because there's nine numbers, right? And then you get to zero. So, if we lose trust, if we lose this and that, it's always preceded by anger. Where do we go with that anger, man? That anger gets in our way. That anger keeps us from being successful. Because the next time you're in relation to someone, whether it's a man, a woman, or a business deal, that anger's still there. And it's hidden. That's the thing about it. It's hidden. What does carbon do? What does carbon molecule do? Stores yeah, stores memory. Do you talk to your carbon molecules a lot? I mean, does that come up in your conscious mind? It's like, oh, oh, there you are. I see you hidden anger in the, my, my bone there. Yeah, talk to our liver. Right, exactly. You know, it's part of the, it's there. It's in all of us. So there has to be a process that we can go through to take this hidden anger and expose it. First, you have to expose it. Then it's not hidden, but it's still anger. <laughs> right? Then we got to deal with the anger. Right? You know another thing that you're really angry about? Every single person in this room. How many of you have had a, uh, a first love? Pretty much everybody in the room. Yeah. Everybody's had a first love. You know, the, the first time you were attracted to the other, the, the woman, right? The first kiss, right? Well, now, you know, maybe culturally, if, you, you know, if you're, you're from another culture, it's not so much. Whereas in today's world, you know, in our time, maybe not so much, but in today's world, there's that first love, right? Yeah. And how's that going? <laughs> Well, how's that going? Oh, it's not still going. What ha and what's, what, what happens when that happens? Anger. The first relationship that you had and it didn't work out went into yourselves. You know, you know what romance does? 
You know, rom- romance. Romance, you know? Romance is, Yogi Ji said, romance is the most wonderful, horrible thing that exists. That sounds like him, doesn't it? You know? It's the most wonderful, horrible thing that exists. And that's because romance is associated with Akash. That's the subtle world. And the soul is connected to the subtle body. So when the soul leaves, you know, when you, when you die and you leave your body, the soul exits this plane of existence carried by the subtle body. So the subtle body is very expansive by nature. And when you, when you, get in, when you fall in love, when you fall in love, when that romance sweeps you up, it actually crushes your pranic body. Oh, I, I love him so much I could just die. Yeah, you could. It literally puts pressure and stresses and crushes your pranic body, the life force that's in your body. That's romance. So you have to understand real romance, which is you have to take the fantasy out of it. And in order to take the fantasy out of it, you've got to get rid of the hidden anger. When there's non-reality in it, you know, that's a problem with romance. It's not real. Real romance goes, it sees the non-reality, and it comes to the reality of it. Oh, that deal's going to make me a billion dollars. Man. Right? It's a romance. It's like, oh, God, I'm set. You're already, you know, he's already spending the money, for God's sake. Yeah, and I'm going to do this and do that. And his mind is going a million miles a minute. Because he's in this, he's in romance. It's not real. It's non-reality. So what has to happen is the balance has to come. You have to have that romance. You have to have that feeling. You have to give yourself to your relationships, to your business, to yourself first and foremost. And then what comes back has to be real. And everything that gets in between you and reality, what does that do? It messes up with your story, right? Your story then is based on something that's not really real. And one of the biggest components that gets in the way is anger. Are you angry, men? Yes? I mean, there are things that make you angry, right? I mean, I I know for me, I I get angry still. I mean, you know, I'll never not get angry. It's a natural thing. We have to accept it. We have to own it. It's okay to feel it. And sometimes, man, you should be angry. It's like, that, that just isn't right. And what Yogi Ji said is you need to turn that anger on yourself. And you say, okay, how do I fix it? You use the energy of the anger. You turn it into compassion, which is what we said a lot yesterday, right? We communicate with compassion. I mean, you could easily go to anger on the other side of that, right? There's an embryo out there and you know, they, they're, they're asleep, but then that fetus who's really got them all by the nose, you know, it's like, hey, what the hell are you doing? Because you're conscious. You're conscious. You see it. And it pisses you off. So what are you going to do with that? Are you going to take that energy and are you going to go, hey, boom, you smack them in the head? Total waste of time. Complete and total waste of time. And not only that, they probably got the legal system on their side and Welcome to whatever your local constable wants to put you in, right? So, we all have this anger. We all have things that make us angry. So how do we get rid of it? How do you get rid of your anger, Mark? What do you do when you get pissed off? Not much. Okay. Good, honest answer. So, uh, you, you breathe? Tell, tell us your process. Tell us what you do. So you hit, the bo- you hit the pause button with a breath. You hit that pause button, you stop it, you take a few deep breaths, and then it's like it, it comes more into perspective. Yeah, that's good. It still lingers. 
it still lingers. And, you know, one of the reasons we have a practice, we have a spiritual discipline, is to get that stuff that sticks to us out. Because it's there, and it's not seen, it's hidden. And not only is it not seen, it's hiding from us. And you know who hides it the best? <laughs> Your brain, man. That mind loves that, loves these things. Because it gives it something to do. You're on your way to a meeting. You're on your way to a, a dinner. You're on your way home. And your mind is just flying. Right? You, have you seen people speeding on the street? Have any of you witnessed such a thing? They're driving really fast. You know what they're doing? They're chasing their mind. Their mind is already way the hell down the road. You know, it's like, you know, hey, come on, man. Can't you see? The, the light's been red for 4.2 seconds. You know, you could turn, you know. They're chasing their mind. They're already down the road. The mind hides our anger. It hides our hurt because it likes to play it. It likes to play with it. So what do we have to do? We have to go to our heart center to take and wash it out. The most effective tool that we have to get rid of hidden anger, hidden emotion, is to relate from our heart. Because that heart, not only the heart muscle, but the magnetics of the heart have the capacity to take and override the hypothalamus. Because the hypothalamus, like Guru Singh would say, you know, it's, it's hanging in the blood. And then as soon as your mind remembers, because your body doesn't know the difference. They don't know whether or not you just got punched in the jaw or you just remembered that you got punched in the jaw. Body doesn't know the difference. It still reacts. It changes the chemistry of the blood. And there's that hypothalamus is hanging down in there, and it's going to tell everybody and everything. It's like, whoa, we just got punched in the face. But the heart has a capacity to deal with memory by overriding the hypothalamus. Now, that doesn't sound very manly, does it? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to my heart. Oh, you wuss. <laughs> no way. Most compassionate man I ever met in my life was Yogi Bhajan. The most abrasive man I ever met in my life was Yogi Bhajan. He could be, he could be coarser than coarse. I mean, you, you could look at him and bleed. You know, I mean, that's pretty coarse. You know, you didn't have to like rub up against it. You know, it's like, there goes your flesh. You know, oh my God. Take your aura and just spread you out. Just from a look. That's coarse. You know, absolutely compassionate. Question? Yeah. Yeah, and that's very, very important. It's very important that we forgive and do it at a cellular level. We have to do it at a cellular level because if it's at a mental level, it's like the difference in that chant that we did in my class yesterday. There's one where our mind was directing, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Gio. Had an experience, right? But when I put my heart behind it, right, and took it out of the head actually into an experiential thing of forgiveness, you know, and, and that's, that's really where everybody's trying to go. That's what all those programs are about is have the real experience of forgiveness. And when it comes to anger and things that are hiding from us, our mind is very good at putting it in little corners and this is and that. And so what we have to do is just get it out of the corner. So let's just get it out of the corner a little bit to start, okay? Great. Sit upright. Put your left hand in Gyan Mudra. Take your right hand and put it in Christ Mudra. This is Christ Mudra. Right? <clears throat> the Jupiter finger, which is wisdom, and this finger, which is patience, by the way. I know it's identified with the flip side, but in fact, the flip side, that was a pun intended. Um, they're side by side. So our wisdom and patience work together. And you hold the other two down like this. This is Christ mudra. When you look at the paintings and the Christian paintings and things, you'll always see this. You'll see this mudra. It's a very specific mudra. Now the Pope used to do it like this. He used to bless like this. It's a blessing. Well, then they got a little lazy and now it's kind of like this. This is Christ's mudra. Now take this mudra 
and go up and forward, just like there, okay? Just a little above center line, okay? About 60 degrees, right? Okay, now look down at the tip of your nose. Your tip of your nose is on the tip of your nose. It's down there, right? Okay, look at the tip of your nose and make a circle of your mouth. And what I want you to do is, is breathe in, and it sounds like this. And continue. Be sure you fix your eyes at the tip of the nose. And breathe powerfully. This meditation burns inner anger and it strengthens your immune system so that you can withstand the onslaught and the push of other people's stories. You know, when, when you and your, your partner are flipping each other's switches and pushing each other's buttons, it's really just a matter of each of you trying to have the other one reflect back in their story what you think their story should be. You're doing great. You've just begun. Keep up. Excellent. You're doing a great job. Yeah, pull that belly back as you blow the air out. There you go. Fantastic. You know, if you breathe really deep and powerfully, you only need to do this about three, four minutes. It will change everything. You know you're going into a meeting. You're going into a situation where there's this high probability that you will be agitated, you will become angry, you will have to deal with containing yourself. Do this meditation for three to four minutes beforehand. Your immune system will build and your blood chemistry will be able to withstand the onslaught of the cortisol that happens when some asshole comes up and freaks out in your face. So breathe powerfully. Don't cross your legs. Good. Excellent. You're doing great. Yeah, you, you suck it in like you're, you're drawing air into a big, you know, one-inch round straw. You push the belly way out. You lift the chest all the way up. And then you blow it out and you pull that navel point back. You guys are doing fantastic. Just keep up a little bit more. You're probably getting a little lightheaded. That's all right. Try to sit straight. Keep your head up. When you blow that air out and you snap that navel back, it puts all of those organs across your lower back on alert, you know? Your pancreas and your spleen up in your mid-body, they're just all coming to attention. They're all saying, oh, hey, we're doing something here. Whatever's hidden inside here, it's going to come out. Come on. Imagine that what you're doing, as you blow this air out, you're taking and you're blowing, you're extinguishing the candle that burns that negative emotion, that bile that burns inside of you. And it's not even yours. It belongs to your great-grandfather. It belongs to your great-great-great-grandfather. It belongs to Fox News. It belongs to the crown. All of those things that program in you this inner anger. You don't need it. Why carry it? Clear it out. Come on. Come on. Keep up. You could do it. We're just going to go half time, and that means about 60 more seconds. Come on.
When this meditation was first given in 2000 in Los Angeles, Yogi Ji had us do it for 11 minutes. We're going to go five and a half minutes. That's 45 seconds from now. Come on, take advantage. Do your best. Stay steady, stay steady. Keep the arms up, keep your head up. Be breathe the same pace. Don't speed up. You can do it. Come on. Final 20 seconds. Tighten your buttocks a little bit. Sit nice and straight. Push that belly way out and then snap it back. Come on. Couple more. Now lock the posture and inhale deep, 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 deep. Fill it up, fill it up. Lock it in and squeeze your spine as tight as you can. Tight, tight. Squeeze. Cannon fire, exhale. Now inhale deep. Bottom up, bottom up, 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 up. Hold the breath. Lock the eyes at the tip of the nose. Now squeeze. Exhale. One last time. Inhale deep. Now hold it. Now every part of your body make it very tight. Fingertips, hands, face, neck, back, legs. Tight. Squeeze everything. You want to get to the anger. You want to get to what's hidden. Find it. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale. Excellent. Relax the arm down. Sit straight. Actually, come lying on your back. I'm lying down. Now, I'm going to take you through a relaxation. And in this relaxation, try not to fall asleep. I know we're tired and, and we, we had sauna this morning, but I want you to try to stay with my voice. Relax the arms at the sides. And now I want you to take and release your belly all the way down into your groin, all the way across your lower back. Let your hips go. Let your sex organs go. Consciously feel your body. It would be very easy because your blood chemistry has changed and you've forced a lot of aspects of your physical story into the light. It would be very easy to just for your mind to check out, but don't let it. Now go down and release your thighs and your knees. Continue down the right leg. Let that ankle go. Let that foot go. The left leg, the calf, the ankle, the foot. Now, gently exhale by pulling your belly back and just smoothly push the air out. And now, smooth and complete, cleansing breath, push the belly up and inhale all the way down to your toes. Inhale. And now suspend the breath. Just let it be in your body and let it circulate. Don't squeeze. Just hold it. Let it be there. Let it circulate. Now let it go. Now release the trunk of your body. Feel the weight from where you feel your bottom touching the ground to where your shoulders touch the ground. That whole middle section of your body, let it go. Just concentrate, use your mind, and feel the weight and feel gravity that creates the central magnetic force on this planet. Let it just pull you down a little bit. Surrender to it. Let any residual emotion just give it back to the earth. Let it go. You set the stage. Now you might as well let the play play. Without moving the head, release the shoulders into the upper arms. Left elbow, right elbow. 
across the forearms. Just feel that tension as it just chases out. It's no longer hidden. We're just going to let it go all the way down the arm, through the wrists, and right out through the fingertips. Just see that in your mind. And take a nice deep inhale. And send the breath out through the fingertips as you let it go. Without moving the neck, without moving the head, release your face. Let it go slack. And now release your scalp. You don't want to use any tension anywhere. You don't have to hold your body. Your body holds itself. You've got 30 trillion intelligences there. They know what they're doing. Just let everything be. But keep your mind and your awareness. Use your brain and use your mind to remain aware. And now go and sensitize yourself at the surface of your skin. Feel where the body touches. Feel where the clothes lay. Feel the air around the surface of your skin. Breath is loose and natural. Heartbeat is flowing with the cosmic one beat of all hearts. And you're just focusing your awareness on the surface of your skin. Consolidate your thought form. Form your thoughts around feeling the surface of your body. And as you become more and more sensitive, now begin to feel the space just beyond your shell, just beyond the skin, your container. Let your tube be there. Let all of the worker bees that keep the tube inhabitable for your consciousness, let it all be. And now you take yourself just beyond and sense and feel the pulsation which surrounds your whole body. Now this is an important part, so really apply yourself because this is how you can take and really everything you just brought up, everything you just took out of the closet, you chased it out of your cells, you chased it out of your glands, you chased it out of your organs, the body's processing it, turning it into waste, and now energetically you need to process this. So feel yourself around your body, very sensitive, and imagine yourself as if you are a million, trillion points of light, and they're all moving out away from your body in 360 degrees, all the way around. Stay focused. Let the body go soft, release, and feel yourself extending out as you release and relax consciously. Try to stay with it. Try not to fall asleep. This mantra, Har Hare Hari Wa He Guru. Take and let the sound of it be the frequency that's coming off of your body in all directions. Yogi Ji gave us this mantra. He said that it, it surrounds front, back, right, left, up and down. 
This mantra secures your story. The truth of you contained in your electromagnetic field. Try to let it penetrate and vibrate. Let the sound of this vibrate in your field of awareness. If you go to sleep, you won't be aware. You'll be rested, but you won't have gotten rid of that inner anger. Let your body go, but stay aware. If you can take this mantra and imagine the sound form of it and have it vibrate out from your body in all directions like a luminous egg, it will cleanse the inner anger completely from your being that you just worked so hard to get out of hiding. So stay with it. It's called mindfulness. Two minutes, I want you to be aware and focus the power of your consciousness, the power of being aware into your magnetic field and make it pulsate with this sound. begin to push the sound outward with your mind push the sound out from every surface of your body
Now catch the sound. Begin to chant. Chant with the music. Wake yourself up and chant with the music. Vocally match frequency. Come on, come out of your dream world. Match frequency. You want to carry the shit around? Come on. You can do it. Beautiful. Come on. Stay lying flat and now chant with your whole body. Use a powerful voice. Engage your navel point. If you want it to work, you got to do it. Last couple of rounds. Use power. The more power you use to project this with your whole body through your aura, the more effective you'll be at re keeping this anger out from reacquiring it. That's it. That's it. Open up. Come on. Last round. Okay, now inhale. Let the breath go. Lie flat and pretend to snore. There's a, a ring of nerves in the throat that are affected by this action of the human body. So pretend to snore. Please stay with it. Keep your mind engaged. Less than a minute to go. Pretend to snore. Few more seconds, keep up, pretend to snore. How do you sing? There's not a single Popeye out there. <laughs> Last couple seconds. Okay, good. Now, put your arms at the sides, palms facing down, put your legs side by side. Take and point your toes away from you. Push your lower back down into the ground and raise your feet six inches. Head and shoulders are on the ground. Push the lower back down. Now, if your lower back comes off at six inches, keep going up until your lower back is back down. But if you, go, if you stay really low and you start by pushing your lower back down, you may find some success. Now, keep just let the breath do what the breath has to do. Come on, put them up. Yogi Bhajan said that inner anger is the basis of inferiority and superiority complexes, manipulation and lying. 
misbehavior, wrong calculation, destruction of business success, and destruction of relationships. Inner anger blocks you from having a relationship with yourself. This set is designed to relieve that inner anger. Now keep going. You're, you're doing great. You're more than halfway there, actually. If you need to, roll your thighs in. You can do it. Focus at the navel. This wakes up anything that's hidden down in there. That's it. There it is. It just woke up. It wakes it up and it balances it. It's a very, very potent exercise. Come on, you can do it. You don't want this stuff in there. Come on, come on. This is the this is like the this is the setup. I mean, this is awesome. You're doing great. Come on. 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 You can do it. I know you can do it. You know you can do it. Even if your body doesn't, you do it. Come on. Okay, now stick your tongue way out and begin to breath the fire through the mouth. <laughs> Powerful. That's it. Keep up now. Only 90 seconds total of this. Come on, bring it up. Bring it up. You can do it. Stick your tongue way out. Again, we have to affect that same ring of nerves. Stick it way out. Twenty nine seconds. That's it. Twenty nine seconds and you're there. Ten seconds. Everybody up. Come on. Ten seconds. Come on. All right, now raise your legs straight up to 90 degrees and begin to pound the floor with all the anger you can muster. Go! Come on! Legs up! Keep going! Go! Come on, you can do it. Don't stop. Do you want to be successful? Get it out. Do you want to be loved? Get it out. Keep going, don't stop, don't give up. Find the core of your anger, come on. Go to the core. Rip it out by the roots, come on. Go for it. 30 seconds, find it. Guarantee your success. Go. Pound! 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 Come on! Pound your hands on the ground! Faster! Faster! Go, 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 go! Ten seconds! Give it all you got! Give it all you got! Be a man! Come on, be a man, go! Inhale, pull your knees to your chest. Keep the head down, let everything relax, but keep the knees up at the chest. It's okay, this is gas pose. Just let it go, don't worry. Hold and release. Just keep the knees drawn in, relax your head and shoulders.
Now stay in this posture. Stick your tongue way out. But breathe through the nose. So most of you are breathing through the mouth, but now stick your tongue way out and breathe through the nose. But you'll want to extend your tongue as far as you can. You may, you may have seen those uh, Tibetan Buddhist images, that posture where the demon-looking yogi has his tongue way out and there's flames around him and everything. Stick your tongue way out and breathe through the nose. Make the breath as long as you can. We're tricking the brain. You stick your tongue out, your mouth is open, and you're breathing through the nose. Flush all of that stuff out. 30 seconds. Stay with it. Now come sitting up. Come sitting up in an easy cross-legged posture. Take and grab your, hug yourself by grabbing your upper arms and you've got to pull the arms into your body so you feel you feel that pull, okay? So you're really, you're, you're hanging on, okay? Just like this. And now try to bring the forehead as close to the ground as you can. And then come back up, close your eyes, and begin going up and down at a rate of just about one movement per two seconds. Okay, so it's down and then up. It's steady. 30 movements per minute. You're only going to do it for two minutes. Up and down. This is going to pressurize and get rid of all that stuff from the liver and kidneys. Come on. You guys did a great job. You just, put, you just threw all that stuff out. You held yourself on your back. It circulated a full cycle, three minutes. The whole blood moved through the entire body filtered out and now you got to just flush it out so up and down up and down we want it to get out we want it to end up in the bladder so it can just get rid of it it circulates the whole body that's why in most yoga exercises we, we do them for three minutes because that means that the, fr the blood that changes, it goes through the whole body. It gives the whole cycle time. That's yogically why we do so many things for three minutes. And now you're just going to keep going here, just l less than a minute to go up and down. And you can feel as you, as you bend forward, you feel that the lower back constricts around and it's pushing all of that poison that you released all that anger, that dis-ease that was at your core. Now it went into your cells and now we're just going to let it all process right on out. We don't want to keep it. You're doing great. Keep up. Keep your pace. Keep your rhythm. Let your body know that you're in charge. Your consciousness, your awareness is in charge. You don't want the anger. You don't want the poison of it. You want to write your own story in relation to who you are at your highest and best. Last couple seconds. Okay, come up, please. Now put your legs out in front of you right away. Just straight out. Good. Take your hands and make kind of loose fists like this. Now pound your whole body. 
All, every bit of your body. Legs out. Legs out. Legs out. Good. Every inch of your body you want to take and you want to strike it. Don't hurt yourself, but you want to hit firmly enough that all of that stuff that got pushed out into your capillaries, which are at the skin level, we're just, we're just knocking it out. Just knock it out. Remember Guru Singh talked about how we shake, right? Well, this is doing the same thing. Let's get rid of that memory, that hidden anger. Come on. Whole body, 90 seconds to go. You got to get everything, the arms, the hands, the face, the neck, the scalp, the butt, everything. All the way, bottom of the feet even. Everywhere you have skin, you need to strike. Do your best. Just realize that every place that you're hitting, there's nothing going to be left there. You've got an open canvas. You can paint the, your, whatever picture you want on that physical body, you can paint. Because right now you're just clearing it off. You're knocking the dust off the chalkboard. 30 seconds to go. Every little bit of you. You're doing fantastic. I, it just, just keep up. You're doing great. You've set a wonderful frequency. Just stay with it a little bit more. Okay, come standing up. Stand up. Put the arms straight out in front of you parallel to the ground. Okay. Now, keeping your spine straight, anchor yourself well through your feet. So that means when you, how you anchor yourself is um, close your eyes, focus right at your belly button, and then see a line that goes down to the hips and through the hips all the way down to your feet and lock yourself into the floor. Arms are straight out in front of you. Palms are facing down. Now with that straight spine, see, see a a golden rod right up the middle of the spine. It's solid, solid. Now bend at the waist until the spine is parallel to the ground and the fingers will be pointing straight down. Keep your spine straight. Now in this posture, I want you to release your arms so that they go slack. No, 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 but you've got to hold your, hold your spine. You see what happens, right? When you have to let go of the arms, you have to separate the pressure inside the core of your body. You keep your spine straight, but you let your arms loose. Hang loose. Now catch the sound. But keep your spine straight. Don't be a banana spine. Try to keep the spine straight. Keep your spine straight if you can, but let the arms hang and the hands go loose. This mantra goes 
all the way around you, side, side, front, back, top and bottom. All aspects of Hada. Had Hare Hari Wahe Guru. Had Hare Hari Wahe Guru. Infinite wisdom manifests in all aspects of the creative force. And it's all at your disposal. Keep the hands loose. We're wringing that hidden anger out of the cortex, out of your brain. Keep your spine straight and let your arms hang. Pressurize the thinking brain by commanding the body to do something that's not natural. Do your best. We're almost there, guys. You're doing a fantastic job. Just two more quick exercises and then you get to lay out and flush everything out. Last 15 seconds in this posture. Spine is parallel to the ground. Arms are hanging free. Spine is parallel to the ground. Okay, now please come down onto your belly. Don't come up. Come straight down. Come onto your belly. Legs are back. Legs are side by side. Try to touch the heels. And either come up on the elbows or you can press the hands up. I want you to roll the neck and the forehead and the shoulders up. But you lead with the shoulders. Roll up into cobra pose. And you're stretching from the chin right straight down the sternum. That's, that's the focus. You don't want to compress the lower back. Okay? Now just hold this posture and close your eyes. Don't compress the lower back, but stretch the upper back out, the, the upper spine out across the, the sternum by rolling the shoulders back and lifting the neck, lifting the chin. You don't compress the neck, you just lift the chin and that creates a pull from the base of the sternum at the top of the diaphragm all the way up through the neck to the chin. You can feel it. It's the vagus nerve. Be very conscious. A few more seconds. Now in the same posture, I'd like you to start to roll your head in big circles and chant at the same time. But keep the stretch. Now keep doing this posture, keep singing, and now begin to kick your feet on the ground alternately, up and down. Come on. It should sound like rolling thunder. Come on. Come on. Kick the ground, but keep rolling your head. Just a few seconds more. Come on. Kick the ground. Kick rapidly, rapidly. Come on. Okay, fantastic. Please come up in an easy cross-legged posture right now. Okay, last exercise. It's only a minute and 15 seconds. Take. Take and extend the arms up until the armpit opens like this, okay? Stretch it up. Make your fingers all side by side. Come up and touch the palms. Stretch the spine up. Close your eyes and roll the eyes up to try to look at the fingertips at the top of the hands. Stretch up. 
सतनाम 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 स्क्वीज इट अप स्ट्रेच इट अप Squeeze. Fifteen seconds. Stretch up. Elevate your consciousness. Inhale deep, 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 deep. Precious breath. Now gracefully as you release the breath, sweep the hands down through the aura. Close your eyes. Try not to open your eyes. And now bring yourself to your back. Come lying flat and deeply release and relax. Arms are at the sides, palms are up. You're one with everything. Let your body release and go soft. Let the breath find itself. Begin to dwell the center of your skull. Just bring your focus to the very middle of your head and let everything go. There's nothing hidden in you any longer. You've opened the doors. You've let the dust out. Let yourself fill with light from the center of the skull.
medicine at the center of your skull. Let everything go. Be light. Fresh and clean, the center of your skull. Brilliant and luminous at the center of your skull. Keeping your body deeply relaxed and refreshed, begin to move your fingers and toes with a deep cleansing breath. Roll your wrists and your ankles. Rub the palms and the soles of the feet together and create a heat to re-stimulate the nerves all 72,000 nerve endings rubbing hard, create a heat. <clears throat> and 
And now stretch the arms on the floor above you and the legs away from you and all the way across the center axis of your body. Big stretch. Toes to fingertips. Big stretch. And relax the shoulders and the arms at the shoulder level. And cat stretch to one side. And take a deep breath as you go into this posture and then stay. Let the leg hang across there and take another breath or two and release the body. Release into the posture. Let the, let the tension out of the back. And then go to the other side, do the same thing. When you go into cat stretch, you stretch into it, but then you have to release in it to let the residual stress go. Good. Now come lying on your back. When you're done, pull your knees to your chest and rock side to side. Side to side. Both sides, side to side. Great. And now making a C shape of the spine, I want you to rock the full length from the base of the skull to the base of the, sc of the spine, all the way up and down. Minimum four or five rolls. And then after you've done that, come sitting up in an easy cross-legged posture. <coughs> Okay, fantastic. One of the things that uh, produces hidden anger and anxiety is self-importance. And self-importance comes from reflecting a story that isn't true. <laughs> Of course you're important. You're the center of the universe, as a matter of fact. You are the one. That's right. We, we all have an independent electromagnetic field. You are soul and separate in your real life, in the real life, okay? This is you in real life right now in this body. In this experience of your life, you are soul and separate from everyone else. You have a divine right to be here, an earned right to be here. You have the right to be happy. That is our birthright. We're going to close with uh, some words from Yogi Bhajan. People are enemies of their own happiness. Charming beauty, hairstyles, clothes, being sexy do not give you a value. Happiness cannot come from outside. You have to get happiness from inside where you are full of tremendous happiness. Yoga is a union between your soul and yourself. It is not exercising and building muscle. For that, you can go to the gym. It is not mind control. You can go for hypnosis. It's not spiritual. For you to become God or no God, you have to become you. Become a partner with your spirit and shine. The pair of opposites do not affect the yogi. Rising above good or bad, whether he's very sick or very healthy, a yogi is very happy. He understands that the purpose of his free will, that independent sovereignty, the, the purpose of his free will is to accept, know, and practice the will of God. Put your hands together. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, 
all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on guide your way on guide your way on so last time to infuse this land with the presence of consciousness that it might draw us back next year. So Bless you, bless you, bless you. Everybody's okay, huh? Hey.